Hello and welcome to this Imish video. Today we will be talking about glass in Blender. Okay, and what we're going to talk about in this video is what is wrong with the Blender glass, some ways in which we can fix it, how to add some nice absorption to give it some nice colour, and some tips and tricks to make your glass a lot more realistic in general. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about in this video, I've actually made a blog about it and I've actually put together a node group that you can download for free from this blog. Um, I'm not going to do any Irish promotion in this video, so don't worry, but if you do get a chance to share this blog on your social media or any websites, then that would be really cool. But in that blog, I've got a free node group for you with everything set up that I'm going to talk about in this video. So if you don't want to watch the video, then don't. But if you are curious why and how I set up this node group, then do watch this video. So as you can imagine, glass in general is a very complicated material. It has light going through it. There's all sorts of reflections going on inside the glass. There's light transport through the glass and it can create things called caustics. Now there is a new setting in the latest blender which allows you to do real caustics, but as you can imagine, that is quite expensive in render time. And you should be able to get very quick and efficient and very realistic glass in Blender without needing to add caustics. Of course, you can add caustics after if you would like, but I'm not gonna go on about it in this video. I think that deserves its own video. But in this one, we're just gonna make very realistic and very high quality glass. Now the Blender shader in general, I don't like it because by default it adds shadow to the glass, which is good in certain situations, but for most situations which I find, adding the shadow just makes things difficult to work with, and especially for new users, there are very specific situations in which the glass should not have shadow. So for example, if a new user they adds a glass to a window and then adds a sun, there is now no light going through the window, which is very strange. There's a shadow being cast through the glass. And another situation, you might have a glass on a table and you can see that there is a gray base to the bottom of this glass, as if the glass is casting a shadow, but it's see-through, so you can see the shadow it's casting, which doesn't make sense. So now let's talk about some ways that we can fix it. If you have a glass on its own, you can go to the object properties and turn off shadows. Then you get a much more realistic looking glass. But the problem I have with this is that then there are completely no shadows and glass does create some shadows. And not only that, if you have a glass window and it's attached to another object, you then have to separate the glass and then change this setting in the object properties. So I find it much more easier, much more universal to create a node setup, which we can then use and add to all of our glass. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is make a new material and we're gonna call this advanced glass. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add a principled shader. You can add a glass shader, but what I do find is that the principal shader does have a lot more settings and you can adjust the glass in far more ways than you can with glass shader. So I'm gonna be using the principal shader. And we're just gonna plug that in and we can see that it's just white. What we need to do now is set the transmission to one and then we're gonna turn the roughness to zero and then set the base color to pure white. Of course, there are no materials in real life which are 100% which are glossy. So it is ideal to set the roughness to a very, very low value. But just for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna set this to zero. But as we can see here, is that the glass is casting a shadow and the base of this glass is just too strong. I think that this looks unrealistic. So that's what we need to fix. We're going to tell it if there is a shadow, make that invisible, but we still want to be able to see the glass in the camera. So let's add a mix shader and we're gonna get a transparent node and plug that in. And then we're going to use this light path node. I highly recommend you look up what all of these settings do. This is a very, very useful node and you'll be using it repeatedly throughout your Blender career. But just for this video, we're just gonna be using a couple of outputs. So what I'm gonna do here is plug in the shadow ray into the factor of the mix shader. And now we're telling it, is it a shadow ray? Yes, if it is, then make it transparent. If it is not, then we still want to be able to see it in the camera. Now what I also like to do is that I also like to hide any diffuse rays. and this just rules them out. So what we're gonna do is plug the shadow ray and the diffuse ray into an add node and then plug that into the factor. So now if there's a diffuse ray or a glossy ray, they're both gonna be transparent. But now there is a new problem with the glass and that is that the glass has no shadow at all. And that is not realistic either. So what I'm gonna do is plug in a mix node 
Then with this node, if I set this to one, then I'm telling it to completely ignore the light path node and just have the normal shadows as we set it before. But if I set this to a lower value, the light path node is going to be gradually brought in and then the shadow is going to be slightly reduced. And the benefit with this, we can slide and tell it how much shadow we want until we find that there is a more realistic value. I do find that a value of about 0.3 is correct. Okay, so now we have a much more realistic looking glass and I find that this glass is much more usable than the previous glass. But like I've said, I've already set this node group up for you so you can download mine and start using it today. But I do recommend you use this on most of your glass objects. But there is one thing to remember, if you are gonna create this glass and you are gonna put it on a window, make sure that there are no shadows. Because with the glass in real life, the window glass is so thin that generally the light transport is gonna be very minimal anyway, that there's gonna be very, very little shadow. So I always set this to zero for window glass. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the green edged glass. And I have actually seen tutorials about this online in ways that you can create this green edged glass. And one way that I see people do it is actually select these outer edges and set these to a green glass. And that is incorrect. It might look okay, but in general, it's not physically accurate. But luckily there is a principled volume shader which does this for you in a much more realistic way. Okay, so it's quite simple. The first thing I'm going to do is set the color to a white value, something like this. I'm then gonna set the density to something like 100 and then the absorption color to a nice turquoise kind of color. This is the kind of color which you will find in the edge of a lot of glass, but sometimes it comes in a more blue or sometimes in a more green. Then we're gonna just set the anisotropy value to one. Now that makes a nice, clean, clear glass, but the light that's coming through it is gonna be slightly tinted in a way. And what this is doing is giving the glass itself some sort of density so the thick areas will be more affected by this color and the thinner areas will not. And that is why when you look at it from the side, there is only a very slight tint. Whereas when you look at it from the edge, because you're looking through a much more of the glass, it's gonna be much more colored into this color. This is actually quite useful as well when you have some objects which have varying thicknesses in the glass. You might have a vase where the bottom is a very thick glass. So the light transport through that's gonna take a lot longer and it's more affected by the color of the volume. Whereas the thinner areas are gonna be less affected. So that is a quite cool and easy trick to make nice, more realistic colored glass. Now there are some more settings in the principal volume and I do just recommend you just play with them and see what they all do because this principal volume shader is a very useful shader. Um, but I'm not gonna talk about this anymore. I think that this on its own has created a very useful architectural glass that you can use throughout all of your objects. But do remember if you are gonna add window glass, make sure that the density is set to zero and there's just no color set on the absorption because you don't really want any density on window glass, otherwise you're gonna end up tinting the whole scene. Whereas usually window glass is quite clear. Now there might be a very slight tint, but in general it's easier to work on your scene when you have more control of the color coming into the scene. Okay, now for the tips and tricks, what I'm gonna talk about are render settings and some render passes which can be quite useful for making more realistic glass. In my light paths, I usually have a default set to 32 across the board and then transparency I usually have set to 50 because I like to use a lot of pampas grass which has a lot of overlapping faces and I find that 50 for that is very useful but of course you don't need to set it this high by default usually something like 12 is fine but across the board I set it to 32 and this is also dependent on your hardware if you find that this adds so much more to your render time then do go back to the blender defaults now for glossiness, I set this to 32 as well because I do like the reflections that go on inside the glass and I want there to be as many reflections as possible. So it's as realistic as possible. So I set this to 32. You can of course set this to a higher value, but in general, I don't really find that there's much difference at all past 32. For transmission, you can set this to a high value. I set this to 32 as well by default, um, but in general, this is only usually necessary if you're gonna have lots of overlapping glass, but the default is usually fine but if you find that the glass starts going black, then you want to bump that up to a higher value. The next thing I'm going to do is for caustics, I'm gonna turn on reflective and refractive caustics. I also like setting the pixel filter to a value of one or 1.15 because I think that it creates a much more sharper image. Okay, now for clamping. I like to set these both to zero. By default, I believe that direct light is set to zero and indirect light is set to 10. You don't really want to touch the direct light, uh, but for indirect light, clamping can be quite useful. If you have a scene where there are some fireflies going on in the scene, you can then set this to a value of 10, which should be able to reduce 
the Lord of the Fireflies, or if there are very intense fireflies, you can set this to a lower value above zero and it should help reduce them fireflies. Setting this to zero basically turns it off completely. Now I don't like to use clamping because I would much prefer to find the source of the fireflies and change that than to add the clamping because clamping is changing the values of light in the scene. It's telling it that if there are very, very highlighted areas, you want that to be reduced. And I find for glass specifically, turning clamping on will actually remove some of the nice highlights which you would have had in the glass. So I set this to zero across the board. If you are having problems with fireflies, then do just make sure you're using light clamping. Okay, so now let's add some nice uh, highlights to the glass. And this is a little bit of a hack, uh, but I do find that the result is actually quite pleasing. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Layer Properties tab. We're going to enable the Crypto Matte and Material. And then we're going to also enable Glossy Direct. And then we're going to hit Render. Okay, now in the Compositor, what we're going to do is add a Crypto Matte node. We're going to plug in the image into the image input, and then we're going to plug in the pick into the image output. Now this has some strange colors, but what this is doing is showing you all the different materials which are in the scene. So what we're going to do is click on this little plus sign. Then we're going to use the eyedropper to click on the material, which in this case is the advanced glass. So we're going to click on that. Now that has created a mask. If we plug in the mat into the compositor output, we can then see that it's created a mask just for that material. And now we can use that to play with some additional glossy direct passes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a mix node. We're gonna plug in the, the main image into the mix and also the glossy direct into the image. If we have a look at the glossy direct, it's basically, it looks like Chrome. That's like all the pure glossiness which is coming onto the glass. So with that set there, let's plug that into the output and you can kind of see it's a very strange mix of both. So what we're gonna do is set that to add. Now what that is doing, that is adding the additional glossiness to the glass, but you want to adjust the slider so it's only a very little bit applying to it just so that there are some additional highlights on the glass, very subtly. But this is affecting the whole scene, whereas we might want to just affect the glass itself. So we're gonna use the Crypto Matte Matte Output and plug that into the factor. And now we can see that only the glass is being affected. Now we might want to adjust this, but because this is going into the factor, it means that we can't adjust it. So we want to add a mix node between that. Let's set the second color to black, and then we can again then adjust the slider here. So if it's pure black, there's gonna be no reflections. And if we just move all the way down to like 0.8, we can see that there are then some more reflections going onto the glass. And I really like this. I think that it really makes the glass pop. Of course, you wanna use it quite subtly, and this is a little bit of a hack, but if you have a scene and you add this on in the end, you might find that this has some really nice effects which you want to continue using. Now, I hope that you learned something about the Blender glass, and I hope that this node group is useful for you going forwards. I do find that the glass in Blender is a little bit difficult to work with by default, but once you understand this very simple setting, it does make it a lot easier to work with. That along with adding the absorption, I feel like you're going to be using the absorption a lot more going forwards. I highly recommend that you download this node and start using it and start playing with it and playing with the absorption settings. And like I said, if you do get the opportunity to share this blog, I would really appreciate it. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll be back again very soon. I'm, I seem to be doing quite a few videos at the moment and I really am enjoying it a lot more. Um, there are a lot of shorter videos, but I hope that they are also useful for you guys because uh, I know that my standard one hour and a half videos are quite a, a mouthful. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.